This video will review complex numbers. By the end of the lesson, you'll be able to express negative square roots as imaginary numbers, perform arithmetic on complex numbers, and plot complex numbers on the complex plane. Expressing negative square roots as multiples of i. By definition, i is the square root of negative 1. By this definition, if we square i, we also end up with negative 1 in the square root squared, which is just negative 1. i squared is negative 1. And we'll get more into this pattern at the end of the video. A complex number is a number of the form a plus bi, where a is the real part, and b is the imaginary part. If b equals 0, then a plus bi equals just a, a, which is a real number. If a is equal to 0, then we have a plus bi equals bi, which is an imaginary number. Example 1, expressing imaginary numbers in standard form. Express the square root of negative 25 as an imaginary number in standard form. So we have the square root of negative 25 equals negative 1 times 25. This is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. So we have i times 5, but we would write this as 5i. Now, standard form here, let's discuss what that is. So, standard form is another way of saying separate the real and imaginary parts. So, write your number as a plus bi. The complex plane. In the complex plane, the horizontal axis is the real axis, and the vertical axis is the imaginary axis. So this would be our real, and this is our imaginary. What does that mean? So we would label these with whole numbers like we're used to. And here we'd label this with i, 2i, 3i, negative i, negative 2i, and so on. Example 2, plotting a complex number on the complex plane. Plot negative 2 plus 3i on the complex plane. Let's start by labeling. Here we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and these are negative on the left here. And then here I have i, 2i, 3i, negative i, negative 2i, negative 3i. So let's plot this. We go over, start at the origin, go negative 1, negative 2, and then up to 3. And that would be right here. So if you notice, we went over negative 2, and we went up 3. Please turn to the next page in your required written modules. Example 3, adding and subtracting complex numbers. Let's perform the indicated operations below. When you add and subtract complex numbers, you're going to add the real parts together and the imaginary parts together. So we can write this as 5 plus 4 plus, and our imaginary parts are 8 plus 1, i. We have an 8i and an i, so this is 8 plus 1, i. This becomes 9 plus 9, i. 
and please leave it like this. Don't factor anything out. This is standard form. We've separated the real part and the imaginary part. So let's go ahead and do example B. We have 7. And now if you notice, I have to distribute this negative. So this is a minus 9 plus, and then here I have a 2i, and this becomes a negative 8i. So 2 minus 8i. So I have a negative 2 minus 6i. And again, don't factor anything out. Please leave your answer like this with the real part and the imaginary part separated. Example 4, multiplying complex numbers with real numbers. So we want to multiply 5 with 3 plus 4i. We're going to use the distributive property as we're already used to, which is multiply 5 times 3 and 5 times 4i. So 5 times 3 plus 5 times 4i. And this equals 15 plus 20i. Example 5, multiplying complex numbers with complex numbers. So here we're going to multiply the 2 and the 7. That's 2 times 7. And then we're going to multiply 2 and negative 3i. We're going to multiply negative i and 7. And we're also going to multiply negative i and negative 3i. So I've multiplied both parts here with both parts here. Let's simplify. This becomes 14 minus 6i minus 7i plus 3i squared. And if you recall from the first page of the notes, when we define the imaginary number i, we also figured out that i squared is equal to negative 1. So 3 times i squared is going to be a real number, not an imaginary number. So I'm going to write this as 14 plus 3 times negative 1. This i squared became a negative 1. And as you can see, I'm taking advantage of the associative property of addition to swap these around so that my real numbers can be together and my imaginary numbers can be together. Now, of course, negative 6 minus 7i is just negative 13i. And so this becomes 14 minus 3 minus 13i, or 11 minus 13i. Next, we have the complex conjugate. The complex conjugate of a complex number, a plus bi, is a minus bi. When multiplying a complex number by its complex conjugate, the result is a real number. Furthermore, when adding a complex number by its complex conjugate, the result is also a real number. When dividing complex numbers by other complex numbers, we need to multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator. Often you'll see this referred to as simplifying. Example 5, dividing complex numbers by complex numbers. Notice here the instructions say simplify. So let's multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the complex conjugate. This follows our definition of what the complex conjugate is. I had 1 plus 4i, so its conjugate, its complex conjugate, has a minus sign here instead of a plus sign. So it becomes 1 minus 4i. So in my numerator, I end up with 2 minus 8i minus 3i plus 12i squared. In my denominator, I can take advantage of the fact that this is a difference of squares. So aside, we have a difference of squares. If we have x plus y times x minus y, this simply becomes x squared minus y squared. If you notice, the first term is x for both of these factors, and the second term is y for both of these. 
and the sign is positive for one and negative for the other. That is what you look for for a difference of squares. You just square the first term, square the last term, and stick a negative sign in between them. So I can do the same thing here. My first term is 1, so this is 1 squared. My second term is 4i for both of these, so this is 4i squared, and then I'm just going to go ahead and squish in this negative sign. Let's continue simplifying. I end up with 2 plus 12 times negative 1, and that's because this i squared became negative 1, and I moved this value here to be next to the other real number. And then negative 8 minus 3 is minus 11, and then I have to not forget the i that's on each one of these. And then I divide by 1 minus 4i squared, excuse me, I divide by 1 minus 16i squared. I have 2 plus 12 times negative 1, this is negative 12, and 2 plus negative 12 is negative 10 minus 11i divided by 1 plus 16. So now I have negative 10 minus 11i over 17, but I'm not done yet. I need to write this in standard form, so that's negative 10 over 17 minus 11 over 17i. If you notice, all I did was separate the real part from the imaginary part when writing this in standard form. And this question comes up every single time I teach this class. Students will often ask, do I need to write my answers in standard form? Yes, you do need to write your answers. in standard form. Simplifying powers of i, by definition i equals the square root of negative 1. Using this definition, fill in the missing values below. So of course we know that i is just going to be i. i squared we've already talked about is equal to negative 1. Now, i cubed, I can use the rules of exponents to rewrite this as i times i squared. i squared times i will also work. So this becomes i times negative 1, which is simply a negative i. Next, we have i to the fourth, so I can write this as i squared times i squared. Of course, i cubed times i or i times i cubed are also valid. This becomes negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. Please take a moment to pause your video and fill in the rest. What do you notice about this pattern? We have i, negative 1, negative i, 1. And then suddenly we're back to i, then negative 1, then negative i, 1. If you had to make a guess, what would i to the tenth equal? If you said negative 1, you're correct. This pattern repeats after four iterations. So that is, it repeats every fourth. One, two, three, four, and then we'd repeat. So i to the ninth would just be i. And then what's 4 away from i to the 7th? 1, 2, 3, 4. So the next value here would be i to the 11th, and that would also be negative i. And so if we wanted i to the 12th, we'd end up with 1. Let's look at example 6, simplifying powers of i. Evaluate i to the 71st power. Now, of course, we could keep going. I could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and I could keep counting this pattern 71 times. But I don't want to count and do the same thing 71 times. Hopefully, you don't want to do that either. A quick shortcut to do this is use long division. So we want to divide 71 by 4, and this has everything to do with the pattern repeating every four times. So if you remember your long division, 4 divides the number 7 
4 divides 7 one time. 1 times 4 is 4, and then we subtract to get 3. You bring down this 1. 4 now divides 31 seven times. And that's 28. Let's subtract again. And what is 31 minus 28? Well, that's 3. 3 is smaller than 4, so 4 can no longer divide 3. This is our remainder. The remainder becomes the new exponent. So in order to evaluate, we'd have i to the 71 equals i cubed. And now you can look back. What is i cubed equal? That's just negative i. So this would be the faster way to do this. The slow way to be would be to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on. All the way until you got to 71, which would lead you to negative i. So I hope you'll try this long division shortcut. Remember the remainder here is what becomes the exponent. And then you can just memorize this first four iterations of the pattern to know that i to the 71st power is the same as i cubed, which is negative i. And this concludes section 3.1.